expect after a long week, a long summer of weak economic data. Our, our next guest is still optimist and is still optimistic. He is the Berenberg chief economist Holger Schmieding, who joins us on the line. Holger, good to chat to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Holger, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked uh, Mr. Meiss there, the CEO of the European Banking Federation. W were the stress tests credible? Yes, I would say the stress tests were pretty credible. Of course, the stress test did not include the recent drop in inflation as a result of the assumptions on future inflation in the stress test were not very tough. However, the other assumption in the stress test, especially the one about the three-year economic outlook, they did model a very severe recession. And you could argue that even with some drop in prices, which we now be facing, the actual economic impact, that is, on real GDP, of such modest deflation that we might be facing would not be severe than what the stress tests modeled. So I would say, yes, the stress tests were pretty stressful. Holger, bar the six billion euros that has to be raised, are banks now clean? Can they play a part in reviving the stalled Eurozone economy? Most of the banks are clean, and especially in, um, across the Eurozone, we now have enough banks with a clean bill of health, that is, banks which should not be inhibited in terms of lending. However, as discussed already, the major issue in the Eurozone is credit demand. It's not credit supply. I do think that in some of the vulnerable parts of the Eurozone, Italy, Greece especially, the stress test results and then the remedial actions which some banks will have to take now, that this will play a role. This will help to get Italian growth up. It will help a bit with Greece. But for the Eurozone as a whole, as in most countries, such as Germany, there don't seem to be very bad banking issues. There is not a lack of credit supply. And in these countries, the stress test will only make a marginal difference. The overall impact for the Eurozone will be modest. But again, for some of the most relevant uh, the most fragile countries such as Italy and Greece, this should make a significant difference. So, Holger, as a whole, what's going to boost aggregate demand? We had a drop in confidence following Russia's aggression against Ukraine and a few other crises. We should see a rebound in economic confidence by the end of this year or early next year. That will be the major factor in getting lending going. On top of that, the residual credit crunch that we had or have in parts of the periphery is easing. The entrenched trend, which we already have for half a year, namely that the credit data, while still weak, are becoming less weak, they, that they're starting to turn up. This entrenched trend is likely to become a bit firmer by um, early next year, and that will help the Eurozone economy after what is still a rough patch now. Holger, we're going to hear from the ECB today at 3.30. They'll reveal how much they spent on the covered bond program last week. Are, are you confident in this, in this program, Holger? I mean, many criticizing it, saying, you know, the covered bond market isn't big enough, the ABS market isn't big enough, the ECB needs to think bigger. Is this part of the program just the beginning? Does the ECB need to, need to move on to bigger things, whether it's corporate bonds or, or sovereign debt? Uh, given the current rough patch in the economy and given that we do have no inflation risk whatsoever, I do think it would be a good idea for the ECB to move on towards covered, uh, from covered bonds to corporate bonds. That might be a step the ECB could take within the next two, three months. All in all, however, I have to say, as borrowing conditions are fairly favorable for most companies across the Eurozone anyway, whatever the ECB does now will also only have a modest difference on the growth outlook. The key basically is for us to get these external confidence shocks out of the way. That typically happens over time. The normalization of confidence will be the major role 
in reviving the eurozone economy out of its current stagnation. The ECB will see to it with its actions that when the upturn comes again um, early next year, it will have a little bit more momentum, but the key turning point cannot be provided really by the ECB. That just has to be the external shocks need to fade a bit, because if you are not confident under the impact of external shocks, then even the very cheapest money wouldn't be spent. And Holger, the big piece of data today out of Germany is the EFO survey. Business confidence could drop for a sixth month, but it seems to be stabilizing. Am I speaking too soon here or not? Well, it would be a nice surprise if it already were to stabilize. We are afraid we will see another and hopefully final, but another drop in business expectations as over much of recent weeks, the overall discussion in the business community still seems to have been about risks, about geopolitical risks especially, and that will probably be reflected reflecting in one further drop in the overall headline EFO and in the forward-looking expectations component, which is what we will watch today. We do hope expectations will stabilize soon, turn up by early next year at the latest, and then pave the way for recovery that we think will start after Christmas rather than before Christmas. Holger, very, very last quick question. We started with the stress tests. Let's end with the stress tests. Now that it's all done and dusted, is the ECB's reputation still intact? I think the ECB's reputation is intact and probably strengthened a bit by the exercise, which was, I would say, suitably tough.